Like Hello, Westchester University. I'm Ryan Carson. And I'm Samantha Massaro. And welcome to another episode of WC Weekly. Samantha, how was the weekend? It was good. Yeah. It was actually really fun. I had a day party on Saturday. Excellent. With, um, I think it's Bar 51? No, Restaurant 51. Restaurant 51. I don't know what it's called, but the food was great. I recommend everyone goes. I only have, have a wrap, so I can't really speak on the food, but the wrap was awesome. Very nice. Very you were nice. there. Ryan was there. I was there, and I had probably 13 mozzarella sticks, which wow. is probably 13 more than I should have had, but Must I be don't nice really regret it at all. Must be nice to be able to eat 13. I really don't regret it. They were little triangles. Like, okay, how are you going to say no? Fine. All right, when I say little, they were, like, probably this big, but, like... Okay. I doable. Need, I think it doable. needs to be done. I mean, I'm not judging. No I one was there eating I them. I felt bad. The servers kept bringing them out. What am I going to do? Be rude and not eat food? No, exactly. I mean, you were. It was necessary. Good call. It was necessary. Did necessary. you dance? A little bit. A little I bit. danced. You danced. There wasn't really a dance floor, but I feel like you don't <laughs> need a dance floor to dance. Like I was kind of in the corner, like doing By my yourself, own thing. Probably. It may have looked a little bizarre, but very bizarre. My day party. I could People do it. People judging, but we just don't tell. Whatever. I'm over it. Exactly, exactly. And the good thing is that the weather was not too hot and not mm -hmm. too cold because there's nothing worse exactly. than going to a day party and sweating. Well, you, and then there's everyone's like always jam packed in one spot because no one ever separates. So it's Never, always just you're one always clump be your, of people. Where your friends are, so yeah. You're always so you're together. just sitting there like this close, and it's. But there were yeah, two floors, luckily. Yeah. So people were downstairs and upstairs, which was super convenient. Yeah, it was a great venue for sure. So yeah, good job awesome. planning that, Samantha. Thank you. Very nice, very nice. And we all know what next weekend is, which is going to be Homecoming. a little bit, a little bit bittersweet because it's the last one. I know it is definitely bittersweet because we did it as freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and now seniors. But it's Our like, last can't you, hurrah. Can't you remember your freshman home, like your homecoming, like it was kind of like just yesterday? Completely different though. Totally yes. different feeling. Oh yeah, feeling, it's you, know? you have no idea what's going on now. It's like you know, but you're still just like. And it's over so <laughs> quick. Oh, you blink. It's like Christmas. I know. And it goes away. I'm excited well, though. Yeah. It'll be fun. Have a good time, definitely. And as always, we have another packed episode of events leading up to homecoming. Later, we'll be speaking with the representative from SAC about events that you can attend throughout the week, as well as homecoming safety tips. Kristen has an interview with Sister to Sister. Gordina has a weekly weather report. Connor is taking a look at sports. And Rachel is talking world news. Before we talk events, in preparation of this Saturday's homecoming game, students are encouraged to wear gold to show off their WCU spirit. Starting Tuesday, you can get the Gold Rush t-shirt for only $5 at the WCU Campus Bookstore. Get there early, there are limited quantities and only available while supplies last. This is the shirt. Rams up, baby. Look at this. These are actually really This cool. is honestly hard for me to do. See, I don't think it's that difficult. No, I think the pinkies is what gets me. Well, you gotta get them a little bit, you know, because Rams are curled. Rams, I know, I'm baby. trying, but I just feel like, like it does, doesn't look as good as everyone else's. I think else's. Your, your left pinky is just kind of jagged. I know, it's that. really just like not that. all there. It's okay. You have to fix that. I'm gonna practice for Saturday. But these are the shirts. <laughs> I recommend <laughs> everyone gets them. They're so around, funky. Walking around campus, just like constantly. Hey guys, home. here I am. When, when they ask for attendance, I'm here. <laughs> Present. Present. <laughs> no, like but that. um, we'll, we'll funky, but cool. I like it. She'll be ready by homecoming, guys. Don't worry. This Wednesday, October 25th, is Westchester's Halloween Parade from 7 to 9 p.m. See performances from various Westchester marching bands, cheerleaders, and dance teams. Parade route will start on Market Street between Church and, Darl and Darlington Street. So that's going to be cool. I've parade. never I love seen parades. that. I always go to the Christmas one. I never go to any. Oh my God. Obviously go I'm missing out. You gotta go to I'm a big like, parade person. I, you, know, you know what I do? I always watch the Thanksgiving no, day definite, parade. Definitely, definitely. I love that. Story. Didn't we actually perform in that? Our yeah, marching that was band two, two years, years ago or something? Ago. That was, I think, our sophomore year. Mm. We did that. It's a shame, because now here I am, my senior year, I haven't gone to any parades. You have to go to, you have to, go to this one, and then you should go to the Christmas one. I should go to both. Because when I go, I'll right. let you guys know how it goes. Live tweets. Everything. I will. Live tweets. There you go. There you go. Take a mental health day this Thursday, October 26th. Presentations begin at 12 p.m. and will cover topics about managing stress and pressure in athletics and academics. Later in the evening, Kevin Hines will present his compelling story of survival in the Madeline Wing Adler Theater at 7 p.m. The event is free to all WCU students and faculty. Just be sure to reserve your ticket in advance. Very nice, very nice. Now let's send it to Kristen with Sister to Sister. Kristen? Thanks, Sam and Ryan. Now I'm joined today in our studio by Taylor and Kelsey, who are both peer mentors in our Sister to Sister program here on Westchester University's campus. Now I know there's a big event coming up tomorrow night, but before we get into that, can you tell me what Sister to Sister is? Sister to Sister is an organization on campus that promotes positive body image as well as proton programs to help bring awareness for eating disorders. Great, so what is the event that you're holding tonight, tomorrow night? Tomorrow night we're having the Sister to Sister fashion show. Um, this is basically an event where we have models that go down a runway and they show off their favorite body part. Great, so what do these participants wear since it's a fashion show? 
Um, we really try to encourage them to not focus on looks and wearing something that's going to make them uncomfortable. We really want them to be their truest self. Um, last year we actually had someone who wore her pajamas <laughs> and she had a great time. So we really encourage everyone to just wear what they want to wear and be comfortable and have a great time yeah. doing it. That's really my kind of outfit too. That's definitely what I would wear if I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling the most comfortable wearing pajamas. Same. <laughs> so uh, where and when is this event tomorrow night? Tomorrow, um, Tuesday, October 24th, we're having the fashion show. It opens at 7 o'clock in Sykes Theater, and then the event will start at 7.30. Great. So why should students on this campus come out to the fashion show to watch? Um, they should really come out to watch because it's such an empowering uh, event. Um, we really encourage people to be themselves, so going out and supporting your friends and mm -hmm. uh, really getting in the mindset of body positivity is really encouraging. Okay, and is there anything else going on at the event that people can uh, participate in? We also have some raffles. Oh, great. <laughs> so definitely come and get some raffles. There's yeah. raffles. And then there's also an a cappella group that'll be singing um, in between oh. models and like different things that oh, we have going on tomorrow. That's so, so cool. Yeah, that's it's, awesome. It'll be super fun. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be a great time and very empowering. Yes. yes. Um, so, how many participants are in the fashion show tomorrow night? Tomorrow we have um, 27 participants. There's boys and girls from different organizations all over campus, great. which will be super fun because usually, like, um, fashion shows are focused on women, but yeah. it's funny or fun to see boys <laughs> walk down the runway too. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. I'm glad there's boys coming out. Yeah. Uh, got some support from all different people on campus. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And uh, finally, is this event for just sorority and fraternity life or can anybody come? Um, we really encourage anyone to come, uh, although you have to be a sorority woman to be in the program. We still want as many people from all different organizations to come and really bring awareness throughout the campus. Great, that's awesome. It's going to be a really empowering night. I can I can feel it. Yeah. <laughs> I, just know it. I just know it. So tomorrow night, uh, Sykes Theater, doors open at 7. Uh, the event is at 7.30, and it's the uh, Love Your Body Day fashion show. So everybody come on out. It's going to be a really empowering event. Uh, so thank you guys for joining us today. Thank Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Of course. <laughs> now we're going to send it to Gordina with the weather. Gordina? Hi, WCU. I'm back with another weather report. Let's see what this week's weather has in store for us. There will be thunderstorms on Tuesday with a high of 70. Wednesday will be partly cloudy with a high of 62. Thursday and Friday will be sunny. Thursday with a high of 59 and Friday with a high of 64. Saturday will be mostly sunny with a high of 65, and we will have showers on Sunday with a high of 51. You guys better grab your umbrellas. That's all I have for this week's weather. I'm Gordina Butts. See you next time. Thanks, Gordina. And today we have a special guest, Kristen, here from SAC talking a little bit about homecoming. Kristen, could you give us a little bit about your position and what you do? Yeah, so my name is Kristen Henry, and I am the Vice President of Traditions for SAC. So that just means that I am in charge of oh, so much homecoming, <laughs> everything homecoming. So um, that means that I'm in charge of the parade on Saturday. I'm in charge of the three events that SAC is hosting. And, um, and that's okay. let's see. Uh, so some of our events that we're hosting this year are the Glow Zumba, which is happening on Monday at 6.30 to 8 o'clock in Sykes, Ballrooms. We're also having a haunted carnival. Ooh, a haunted carnival. I love carnivals. <laughs> From 12 o'clock to 4 on Thursday, also in the Sykes Ballroom. And then the last event during the week is our um, trick or treating event where you guys can wear your costumes. That's also in Sykes Ballroom um, from 1 to 4. Very nice, very, very nice. Now, I feel like everyone kind of agree that, you know, around campus looks like homecoming has a little bit of a different face this year than it has in definitely. the past couple of years. I know since, you know, when I was a freshman, it's definitely changed. Um, can you just kind of give us a little bit of a, some details about, you know, what's going on actually on the actual day of homecoming? Um, well, on the day of homecoming, so we always have our parade, and that starts at 10 o'clock, and that's, that'll be in front of Sykes, and that happens every year. We mm. have our competing organizations. But this year we're doing something different, where in between the parade and the football game, we're having a Church Street Fest. And that'll just be for everyone. That'll be for alumni, families, students. And you can go there, you can get food, you can, uh, we have pumpkins to paint, we have inflatables for people of all ages. So it'll be a really Does good that, time. Do the inflatables, can I participate in that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Anybody can participate in the inflatables. Very cool. So, so the food trucks will be there? Because aren't the food trucks on Church Street? Mm -hmm. They yes. are, right? The food okay. trucks will be there. We'll have, um, 
I believe we're having cotton candy and Ooh, popcorn. Cotton so. wow. candy. You guys really have been busy. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Big job nice. you have. Sounds stressful, but I'm sure <laughs> you're going to do wonderfully. Definitely. Definitely. I'm excited. So I actually have a couple of questions for you guys if you uh -oh. guys want Ooh, to do some uh -oh. trivia. Seriously. All right. Let's see what you got. Let's see um, what you got. So if you know the answer, just put your hand in the middle and you can answer. Like here? Is this yeah, a good spot? That's perfect. Just smack your hands in. Okay. okay. So our first question is, what is the theme of this year's homecoming? Yes? Halloween. Yes, so our theme is... Uh, that was a wild guess. I thought it was. I was like... Oh. It's a haunted homecoming, so everything Halloween. Our hashtag is WC I mean, Boo look. if you... Uh, WC Boo. <laughs> WC Boo if you're posting on social media, make sure to use our hashtag. Okay. Um, so far it's one nothing, just so we're all on the same page. Yeah, so yeah this point I'm just trying to okay. cheat over here. Um, who will the Golden Rams football team be playing this Saturday? Yes. Oh, I told you this before. So Ryan, Ryan gave me the answer, so really, Ryan should get the point. Bloomsburg. Well, Ryan was wrong. I was wrong. I told you they played it on October 14th. They're actually playing Kutztown this time. That's also wrong. <laughs> so we're actually playing East Stroudsburg at 2 p.m. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm mortified. We are really good at this. This is wow, awesome. Okay. So the score is one nothing. So um, what time does the homecoming parade begin? And I just told you this. So, yes? 10 a.m. Yes. Yes. Um, um, Really so make sure you're there at 10 a.m. for the parade. Um, we also just talked about this one too. But what new tradition will be joining our homecoming festivities? Yes. The like Church Street Festival. Yes. Thing. And just so everyone knows, that starts at 11 a.m. And for our final question, uh, what's different oh, about <clears throat> this year's homecoming court? Yes. There's it's um oh my god it's not like no longer about king and queen right isn't it just right so it's the word. It's I don't know. You tell me. I guess you can say it's in. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's like I know it, but I don't. You got it mostly right. So it's gender neutral this year, which means that okay. two guys could win or two girls could win. So is it the mm. same? Like t it's not a homecoming king and queen. Right. So now it's. It's called the royal court. Is that what you said? Yes. So now very it's nice. uh, homecoming royalty. I like that. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Very I like cool. that. Very cool. Very cool. And then voting's still the same, right? Still. Voting's still the same. You online, or whatever, on, I believe, right? You can vote on okay. OrgSync. Uh, through the homecoming page, and or you can um, you can vote at the homecoming events. Very so nice. Maybe I'll win. Awesome. I don't know though. I might not. Sam, they, they kind of tell you if you were nominated by now. I think they're gonna surprise. They're surprising. They're like, <laughs> Sam, just kidding. We'll see, but <laughs> it might be too late. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for coming yeah, in. You know, you. Thomas, thank you seems like you guys. Good luck this weekend. Yeah, it'll do great. Seems like it's been very busy, but it looks like it's gonna turn out to be a great weekend it for you guys. Be great. So I'm really excited. Looking forward nice to it. Weather. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think we're supposed to actually. Hopefully. I guess we'll find out. Well, Georgina's gonna tell us before, so we'll see what's going on. And I guess now we're gonna present it to Connor with sports. Connor. Thanks, Sam and Ryan. Westchester football secured a win on the road this past Saturday, toppling Cheney University 55-6. This improved the Golden Rams' record to 6-2 overall in the season and are tied with Kutztown and Shippensburg for first place in the PSAC East Division. The Rams dominated the game from the start with a 32-0 lead going into halftime. Westchester continued to pour it on in the third quarter with a pair of rushing touchdowns by Jarrell Elder and Mark Dukes. The Golden Rams were able to bounce back in a big way after a tough home loss to Bloomsburg last week. Tyler Karpinski was a prominent part of the offense, finishing with eight catches for 173 yards and a touchdown. Westchester's defense was able to keep Cheney off of the scoreboard until late in the third quarter. They collectively recorded five sacks on the day as well. Westchester returns to Farrell Stadium next Saturday for homecoming weekend, facing off against East Stroudsburg. Hope to see you all there. The Westchester men's soccer team was able to secure yet another win on Saturday against Slippery Rock, coming out on top by a score of 1-0. The Rams were able to remain undefeated in conference play with the victory and improved to 12-2-1 overall on the season. Westchester had difficulties finding the back of the net until the 86th minute, where Kyle Hoops scored on a header off of a corner kick by Daniel Grinrod, giving the Rams the late lead. The reliable senior goalkeeper Matt Palmer made two crucial saves and was able to secure the 15th shutout of his career. This ties in for first all-time in career shutouts. The men's soccer squad looks to continue their strong season as they host Seton Hill on Senior Day this Saturday. Finally, the Westchester field hockey team pulled out a victory against visiting Mercyhurst with a score of 7-0. It was an offensive clinic for the Lady Rams on their senior day as junior Caitlin Hatch re registered a hat trick as well as an assist in the contest. 
Senior leader Rachel Toppy also tallied two goals for herself, making it a total of 12 goals on the season. The Lady Rams were able to put Mercyhurst away early with a halftime score of 4 to nothing. Westchester led in total shots as well as shots on goal by a large margin. The victory improves their season record to 10-6 and 4-4 and four and four in PSAC play. The Lady Rams close out their season with two road games, starting with Bloomsburg on Wednesday the 25th. That's all from sports this week. Now let's send it to Rachel with World News. Thanks, Connor. The U.S. Air Force is preparing to place a fleet of nuclear-armed B-52 bombers on 24-hour alert for the first time since the end of the Cold War in 1991, as tensions escalate with North Korea. Around 76 of the B-52 bombers will be ready to take off at a moment's notice and can fly up to 50,000 feet at subsonic speeds while releasing a variety of bombs and missiles. The Air Force's Chief of Staff, General David Goldfein, stated that he looks at this as the reality of the global situation we find ourselves in and how we ensure we're prepared moving forward. The fate of Sergeant Bowie Bergdahl will be soon determined as his sentencing hearing begins today. Bergdahl was captured back in 2009 by the Taliban after leaving his base in Afghanistan and then was freed in May of 2014. The military court is expected to hear dramatic testimony for, from three veterans who were injured while searching for him after he deserted his post. Last week, Bergdahl pleaded guilty to the charges of desertion and misbehavior before the enemy and can now be facing a life in prison. It's official, Justin Timberlake has announced he will be the headlining act of Super Bowl 52 halftime show. This show will mark Timberlake's third time on the NFL stage after his halftime performances back in 2002 and 2004, which will give him the distinction of having the most appearances by an individual entertainer. The Super Bowl halftime show is the most watched musical event of the year, so this will certainly mark a milestone in Timberlake's career. That's all I have for this week's World News. Now let's send it back to the desk. Thanks, Rachel. Well, that concludes this episode of WC Weekly. If you have anything you'd like to be read on air or you'd like to get involved with WC Weekly, be sure to email us at wcweekly at wcupa.edu. Be sure to follow us on Facebook for segments, events, and much more. Until next week, I'm Ryan Carson. And I'm Samantha Massaro. Have a great week, Westchester University. And an even better weekend. I'm joined today by uh, Taylor and... <laughs> <laughs> this show will mark just... Oh, my God. I don't know what the... <laughs>